here we are so this is how it exactly looks like the re framework so as we can see I just open the folder where we have the re framework so this is how the structure looks like as we were talking about so it has a main XAML in it there's a process there's a framework folder in which we have pre-built XAMLs which we might be using in the future so there is a data folder in which there is an excel file that we can see and this is called the configuration file so here is where we actually give our values it can be URLs it can be shared folder drive path it can be any other required fields if we have any assets any credentials that we need to log into a system that we can give it over here and these are a few constants so it can be like the timeout that you decide short timeout medium and long and where exactly the screenshots of errors should be saved then the delay that you want to introduce in your particular implemented process and all such kind of values once that is done so we have uh, such kind of files here and here it is test run all test so it's a XAML that we can use to test perform our unit testing normally so let's quickly get into the RE framework so this is how the main file looks like as we were uh, looking at earlier here is our init state get transaction state process state and end process and as we have seen if there is any error that has come or occurred in init state it will go and end it and process if it was successful then it will go to get transaction data and will try to get the next transaction and will send it out to process transaction if there is no data in it then it will directly end the process sorry so uh, right here if there is any error that can occur okay as we can see if there is any error so it can be system exception it can be business exception so business exception is something that we are explicitly throwing out and system exception is something is something that we didn't expect so if it is a system exception that will be directly going towards the init state and it will perform the initialization settings then it will come through get transaction data and then to process transaction if it's a business rule because it's business rule even if we retry it there is nothing that is going to change over there so we will just move on to the next transaction and it will again be in a loop coming down to process transaction so this is what we were talking about in the earlier lecture in the next lectures we will be going through each and every state in detail